Hello everyone, welcome to Pikeville History Moments, where we talk about the history and heritage of Pikeville, Kentucky and the surrounding area. Today, we're talking about the Pikeville Cut-Through Project. The Pikeville Cut-Through Project has long been called Hamley's Dream, especially in the years before it became a reality. Depending on who spoke of it, the phrase seemed to convey either hope or mockery. Dr. William C. Hambley served as Pikeville's mayor from 1960 through 1989, and while he had many accomplishments, the cut-through was his highest priority in office. Once completed, the cut-through project would move nearly 18 million cubic yards of soil and rock at a total cost of nearly $78 million. Today, the CSX Railroad, the Loviza Fork of the Big Sandy River, and a modern four-lane highway passed through the channel formed through Peach Orchard Mountain. The highway combines the traffic from four major routes and the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet estimates that about 25,000 cars pass through it daily. The project created approximately 390 acres of much needed usable flat ground. It's important to note that the cut-through was first and foremost a solution to three problems that affected the health and finances of every resident and business in the city. The first problem was the flooding that happened frequently during the spring months. The most recent flood came in 1957 and had devastated the city with reports saying that more than 2,600 homes and 200 businesses were damaged. The second problem was the railroad that ran along the path of today's Hambly Boulevard. Along the railroad were numerous coal loadouts supplied by ever-present coal trucks driving through the downtown streets. The third problem, land was so scarce that the Louisville Courier Journal reported in 1949 that a tract of about a third of an acre had sold for $177,000 or about 1.9 million in today's dollars. Pikeville was hemmed in on all sides. The traffic congestion, dust, and lack of land combined to stifle growth. While the rest of the country's population boomed, Pikeville lost numbers. Funding was, of course, the primary obstacle to building the cut through. To set the stage for this, in 1965, Pikeville became the first town in Appalachia to win the prestigious All-American City Award. This didn't directly produce funding, but it's thought to have bolstered later efforts. Based in part on this achievement, Pikeville then won a grant to become a model city in 1968 under a new government program. The program began in 1966 and was designed to coordinate activities across several agencies that offered funds to solve individual problems. The nearly 20 agencies that were involved combined those funds to support the cut-through project. Among the larger contributors was Housing and Urban Development, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Appalachian Regional Commission, and the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet. The first phase of construction began on November 26, 1973 and set about moving 13 million cubic yards of material to form the initial channel. The overburden from those cuts built Bob Amos Park, a recreational center for the city, and created needed residential property along Cedar Creek. The first train traveled through the Manmade Gorge on July 7, 1978. During phase two, five million additional cubic yards of rock was moved to make way for the roadbed. On September 17, 1980, the temporary dams on either end of the cut were removed and the Leviza Fork began flowing through its new channel. The downtown rail bed was removed and the old riverbed was mostly filled. A downstream section of the riverbed now called the Pikeville Pond 
was retained for flood control and recreation. In the final two phases, Hambly Boulevard was constructed, the old middle bridge was replaced, and the flood levee was completed. The flood control project included floodgates beneath overpasses on each end of the cut through to protect the downtown area. Unfortunately, during construction, maybe the worst flood the area had ever seen in a hundred years arrived in 1977. There have been several flood events since, but to date, the area between these gates has been spared. A dedication was held on October 2nd, 1987 with Governor Martha Lane Collins saying to the 2,000 or so people gathered that they were celebrating what was perhaps the most remarkable engineering project ever undertaken in Kentucky. Traffic started moving through the cut-through project the same day. There's much that Pikeville has now that wouldn't have been possible without the project. A partial list of development over the old riverbed includes the Appalachian Wireless Arena, the Pike County Health Department, Pike County Detention Center, Big Sandy Community and Technical College Pikeville Campus, several new Pikeville Medical Center treatment centers, free parking for downtown, and a 10-screen cinema. The most recent addition made possible by the project is located at the top of the cut-through itself. The Overlook Event Center is a state-of-the-art facility perched high near the edge of the cut and provides the best vantage point to view the project. It's thought that the success of this project helped bring about the construction of US-119 and US-460 in other parts of the county. The greatly improved ease of travel in the region from these projects has likely increased all travel along these corridors, which has benefited all communities in the area. Hambly thought this project could turn Pikeville into a regional center for commerce. Though there's more to be done, the evidence suggests he was correct. Seventy years before construction began, negotiations nearly killed the project. While the first train to run through Pikeville did so in 1905, it took some negotiating to accomplish. The city had asked for $70,000 to allow the railroad to build through the downtown area. Rather than pay that price, the Chesapeake and Ohio said they would instead build a tunnel beginning near the mouth of Cedar Creek. It appears that this tunnel would have passed through the mountain along the same path the cut through would eventually follow. The city and the railroad settled their differences and rail was laid on what is now Hambly Boulevard. If the tunnel had been built, it could have made the cut through nearly impossible to build. Without the railroad's presence, would the problems the city faced have been severe enough to gain the attention of funding agencies? It seems likely that while the railroads passing through the city ultimately became a problem, without it, the growth that the cut through helped bring about would never have happened. In fact, in an interview with Sarah George, then with the Appalachian News Express, Hamley would say that the railroad's presence was the true inspiration for the project. He said that he realized as a child that the tracks divided the town both literally and figuratively and that to be truly united, the tracks had to go. Had those negotiations failed, Hambly may have never seen his dream become a reality. Thank you for watching Pikeville History Moments. Please hit like and subscribe. And if you're going to be in the area, Take a drive up to the Overlook Event Center or walk by the original railroad station on Hambly Boulevard. While you're there, take a short stroll over and visit the Big Sandy Heritage Center Museum.